Thanks, Dan. With us on Bill O'Reilly in the Miller Time segment tonight, plenty of fodder for the sage of Southern California. Radio star Dennis Miller joins us now from Los Angeles. Okay, you know, this Limbaugh story, this is interesting on a bunch of levels, particularly uh, for guys like you and me, who say provocative things all the time. Now, m not many people know this, but Miller and I have been discussing uh, buying uh, the Oakland Raiders, who uh, haven't won a game in, since 1812. Um, you know, Billy, the Raiders play like they're wearing the patch on the good eye. I <laughs> know. They came into uh, New York last Sunday. It was, it was sad. It, it's a sad situation because they used to be such a great team. All right, so... so Limbaugh, NFL, racism, go. Well, listen, Billy, the, to me, the NFL product, and listen, it's still my favorite sport, but uh, it's, it has suffered through the use of incessant instant replay. I think in an effort to get it perfect, they're not getting it right anymore. And right, by right, I mean it's not as enjoyable to me when, you know, the Patriots have an eight-minute break with two minutes left in their game. So the, they have replay rules that league. If he has said this stuff, l let him live by the same rules. I want to hear it. I keep hearing all these contentions of what Rush Limbaugh has said. You, you know if our southern border was as scrutinized as this guy, it wouldn't be as poor as everybody listens to him every day. They have been for years. Every utterance is on tape. I w I'd like to hear some of these quotes, you know, that, that, that they say happen. No, we couldn't find them. I haven't heard some of them. Yeah, we couldn't find them, and we put our researches well, on them. Well, then I don't think they find. exist. Who's more scrutinized than Limbaugh, for God's sakes? They put an on-star button in the middle of his forehead. They follow him wherever he goes. But what does it say about the NFL, then, if they basically are taking rumor and innuendo, kicked out by people who don't like Limbaugh's politics, like Al Sharpton, and they say, well, gee, um, we heard he said this, so we're not going to let him buy in. Um, that's number one. And then there's the Donovan McNabb controversy, number two. It says that the NFL, where I was lucky enough to be for a couple years, and is a fun ride, I'm telling you, it's, it's cool. It's like a boys' clubhouse for adults, but it also is the most politically correct environment I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you got to remember, you have a sporting press out there that fancied at one point they were going to change the world. And instead, they ended up writing down and distance stories about high school teams for a buck, uh, you know, every page inch. And I think a lot of them now have this zeal that they're going to be the ones who are going to winnow out the next great injustice done racially in this country. So it's a tough politically collect correct climb. I don't even know why Limbaugh would want to be in, quite well, frankly. Well, you know, it it's might... fun to be in, and you get to see, look at uh, Jennifer Lopez yeah, and uh, Mark uh, Anthony, and they're in their little booth, and they're dancing and all. But Billy, but, Billy, Billy, you remember three years ago when you and I each bought one thirty second. Uh, part share in that badminton league that they had yeah, going didn't work out there in the Northwest. Didn't work it out, Miller. I'll never out. listen to you again. It, um, it, badminton it in bad. Alberta, Canada, not happening. You know, I don't know how the hell I sold it to you. <laughs> and when we tried to get them to go from plastic strings to gut and they bridled, I knew we it. weren't long for okay. it. Now, Donovan McNabb, I think, is an excellent quarterback. Uh, I always have. And uh, Limbaugh doesn't. And Limbaugh says that he's overrated because a lot of people wanted black quarterbacks to succeed. So that seems to be the millstone around Limbaugh's neck. Is that legitimate? Well, uh, I don't know if it's legit or not, but so be it. I, I go to football to get away from all the day-to-day -day crap of the world. I see uniforms. I don't see colors. I have such a headache from the, the nonstop. Uh, uptightness in this country that I watch these games to go away from all that. If that doesn't mean so be it. It's not the end of the world. All I know is Mark Cuban's in the NBA. You remember that dust oh, up he had man. last year sure. where he said to Kenyon Martin's mother, your son's a thug? I mean, I don't know. Does that make Mark Cuban a racist? Well, Jay-Z, the rapper Jay-Z owns part of the uh, New Jersey Nets, and he, he did this big riff on white America being bad. Uh, at the inauguration weekend, and he's no problem with that. Okay, um, I think we see the hypocrisy here, and um, it's it's wrong. Now, Al Gore, one of your favorite guys, he shows up in Madison, Wisconsin, and he's talking about global warming, and some Irish wise guy, not me, not Miller, okay, two of the top Irish wise guys in the world, some other Irish wise guy steps up and says, hey, Mr. Gore, your documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, is bull. Roll the tape. Well, the number of polar bears have increased, actually, and are increasing. You don't think they're endangered, do you? The, the number of polar bears have increased. Do you think they're endangered? Uh, 
the number of polar bears have increased. <laughs> I mean, right, if, uh, the, uh, if the number of polar bears in, increase, surely they're not endangered. Put the and, word and polar the judge, bears. A judge did no, have a lengthy it. hearing. We have to move on. No, but no, I mean, a pre a Vice, yeah, President Gore, Vice President Gore hasn't... Vice, Vice President... Ha We're not doing a debate here. All right, so what do you think about that? Well, I had that guy on my show, by the way, the Irish oh, I guy. Know that. You uh, had him on? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he was great. He's great. He's just a guy who just wants answers. And I think that clip points out the whole thing on global warming. It's, it's the empirical, i.e., the Irish journalist, versus the ethereal, i.e., Gore. All the guy's saying is there are more than there's ever been. <laughs> the, the population is increasing. And Gore, and then Gore goes to that uh, feeling card. Are you saying they're not in danger? <laughs> I guess so. They're proliferating. So, you know, you're talking about numbers versus feelings. And on the left side of things, feelings are always going to trump numbers. Yeah, but I don't it think that's appear... fair because here, here's the deal. Um, a lot of people go to warm climates to uh, relax. And when you relax, uh, you, you might procreate a little bit more. And, you know, you're down in the Caribbean or Hawaii. And what? so the polar bears are basically now not cold, as cold as they used to be. And they're kind of living a little bit more... La Vida Loca. You know what I'm talking about, Miller? Well, see, I was under the assumption all polar bears were gay. Why so were you I under that no assumption? Why, whatever made I, you think I, that? I thought I read that somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> I had heard the Canute was gay. Listen, Canute. it would appear to me that the only emissions that Al Gore is really afraid of in the way of CO2 is a hard question about the environment. And I think global warming might, in fact, be caused by all the smoke he's been blowing up our collective dairy air about it over the last <laughs> eight years. And he's making too much money off it. Billy, it's a wise old aphorism that I invented earlier today. Beware the profit seeking profit. And uh, Gore's making a little bucks. too much. Yeah, million he's making bucks. a little too much quan yeah. off this. <laughs> all right. Talking about profit. Uh, major U.S. banks and securities firms will pay record bonuses this year. We just learned that this week. $140 billion with a B. So th this is my question. Uh, you know, we know these guys, <clears throat> even though the economy is not good, unemployment about 10 percent, the folks are suffering. The wise guys always get the money, Miller. They always get the money. Well, not always, Billy. Sometimes the gay polar bears get it. But here's my feeling. Um, if you trust Wall Street, the reason it's called Wall Street is because you've got to be as thick as a wall <laughs> to trust it. Listen, I like my guy on Wall Street, but I assume if it comes down to him making a buck for himself or a buck for me, he's going to make the buck for himself. All the money I save with Geico, I give to Geithner, to put it in a simplistic way, <laughs> and I just don't, uh, I don't but go But what happened to Wall change Street. we can believe in? I mean, we elected Obama, we, the collective American voter, to clean all this stuff up, and it's just the same stuff. Guantanamo's still there, Iraq is still there, the Wall Street wise guys are making more money than ever. Where's the change? Well, like they said, we hope it changes, but it ain't going to change. No. None of this stuff changes. <laughs> They've got their brokers. We've got our brokers. The system never changes. All I know is I, I can't be disappointed by Wall Street anymore. I don't trust it. If you put your money there, it's like, why do you think they fly you in if you're a rich Australian guy to Vegas on their jet they and put want you and give you free your meals? Money. Dennis Miller, everybody. You, you lose eventually. You lose on Wall Street eventually, too, I think. All right.